Welcome back to another episode of League of Lit reviewing Jules and Monty because it's been 10 years for all of it. Here at League of Lit, we talk about books, adaptations, and anything else we wish to talk about and tie it to lit because we can. And just to throw it in for good measure, it is a truth universally acknowledged that we are not a spoiler-free podcast. And today we're talking about episode... 14 of Jules and Monty. Despite some of the joyous seeming of the introduction, uh, this is probably one of the heavier episodes um, in the sense of at the very beginning, before you even get to the title card, there's no music, nothing. They do stick a trigger warning at the top. It is a brief depiction of violence as derived from Act 3, Scene 5. So we begin this episode the way that we ended episode 13, and that is with Nancy kind of discussing what we're about to see. She talks about how she has tried to beg Jules to kind of let her show this, and how it's a different dynamic between them right now, I think. I think Nancy is trying to figure out how to be a good friend and also how to take care of her friend. I'd say there also seems to be a pretty big shift in Nancy here. Um, in the way she kind of discusses the fraternities. She's never been a big fan of the Kappa Mu Tau Gamma feud. It's never been a big thing for her, but she's kind of always understood where she stands in it because she feels she has to with Ty and that she can just stay out of it. I think now she doesn't feel that way anymore. So I think she is starting to kind of see the negative side much more clearly and I think it's really starting to wear on her. Which in the source material, there are a few different ways I think this could be taken. Um, I don't see anything that like outright states that Juliet was struck. I mean, there's definitely a lot of frustration that you can sense from the source material. And I think a very common way because it was... I mean, it is the most common way that you see it depicted. Knowing that this is what is coming, it is almost heartbreaking when you see the title card. It just, it looks very much like sibling affection because it is a sibling relationship in this sense. It is not father and daughter. It is brother and sister, which does, I think, shift things a little bit. So I think with all of the like the bargaining and whatnot that we have at the top with Nancy at the beginning where she keeps saying that like she has tried to get Jules to make this decision for this to be shown um but for one reason or another Jules just keeps saying no we don't fully know what's going on um but there have been subtle hints um, and some not so subtle throughout the entire series up until this point that, you know, hint that there is something, uh, you know, things are better when Cliff isn't angry. And now Nancy is showing us why that's important. Nancy is also kind of the voice of reason in Jules and Monty, which you don't necessarily have as much of in Romeo and Juliet. There's a little bit of that in The Prince, the character of The Prince, but not as much as I think Nancy is. She really genuinely gives us the perspective that is needed to understand how sort of ridiculous all this is. So this is something that definitely is more of uh a focus on the acting choices and more than likely some direction choices where you can see the shifts in Jules and Cliff as their as our conversation continues because yes Cliff is you know filling Jules in on oh well you know like half of my fraternity is really mad the other half is super depressed he has to come up with something that will bring the house together and bring up their spirits and the solution that he comes with in the grand scheme of things like to have a competition of sorts that's not a bad idea the thing that really like it's where you start seeing the shifts with Jules and then in turn you see the shifts with Cliff is his decision to make Jules be the prize. But you can see in Jules' body language, in her facial expressions, and, you know, the tone of her voice, you can hear it that, like, 
this is very disappointing. Like, I understand, you know, you want to, you want what's best for your siblings just as much as your parents wants what, what is best for you, which is what the source material is kind of getting at a little bit. Um, but it, when in this modern day and age where that is not the normal, um, it's when somebody says no, you should listen. Cliff was so certain that Jules would say yes, that he says that no, or that yes sounded like a no. And that's when you really start seeing more of the physical adjustments that Cliff is like in Cliff's body language, where you can see his grip is a little tighter and it's building up to what actually happens, which is he hits her. And I think Cliff is kind of trying to brush over what had happened at the party the night before. And Jules is like, how are you like so happy right now? It doesn't seem like you should be with what just happened at your party last night. Like your best friend is in the hospital with a shattered nose. There's a lot going on. I imagine both fraternities are under a lot of fire from the dean and the school in general. So what's going on? So Cliff announces that he's decided I'm gonna deal with the Mutau Gammas at some point, but first we're gonna have a contest at the Kappas and Pierre's gonna win. I'm gonna rig it. And Juliet is confused. And that's when Cliff announces that uh, this prize to be won, something that everybody would want, something that everybody would compete for and fight for, is her. Her hand, a date, her relationship. I don't really know exactly like what the what his thought process is there um obviously the source material is that she would be marrying paris uh, clearly that doesn't go very well uh because this isn't the 1800s you can't promise me to your friend cliff obviously from the little bit that we've seen of cliff has a temper and so jules saying no to him it's not really shocking that he has a problem with that um, it definitely gives that Cliff has been given kind of anything he wants for a long time. And Jules, I think, has played a part in that because she understands him. And there are some people that you feel like you have to coddle. And so he kind of goes off the rails. So Cliff here gives Lord Capulet's whole, are you not proud, are you not blessed speech, which has always really bothered me because uh, I agree with Juliet. How can I be proud of, of something I hate, something that's causing damage, something that is so angry for no reason, um, which angers Cliff yet again. I think this moment really shows Jules who her brother is um, and really shows us, obviously, who her brother is as the audience. And it it's gonna have a lot to do with propelling the rest of the story forward. The entire experience of this, it, you can't help but feel for Jules and feel a sense of anger and want, you know, a sense of justice for her because it seems like the motivation that is very present in this is Cliff's social status. He believes that her choices reflect poorly on him. I think what we see here in what Ed and Imogen have crafted along with the rest of their production team is you can see that Cliff firmly believes that his social status is what will get Jules further in life, not Jules making her own decisions and choosing what she wants to do with her life. And the episode ends with Jules calling Nancy and asking for her help. And we don't know if we ever truly find out what she was specifically asking for help i th remember the first time that i saw it i just kind of took it as this seems to be something that maybe has happened before and the only reason why i think that conclusion is possible is because of the different hints that are dropped along the way there is some stuff to come that you know kind of makes you question clearly there is something that you know is is different about this experience and it's you can tell it's definitely a trying time for both Nancy and Jules, but 
we get to see a little bit more of just how trying it is in this episode for Jules. It was difficult to watch. It's always difficult to watch this one because it makes me very sad. Um, but we've done it. That's the end of episode 14. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to this very special League of Lit for the Jules and Monty 10th year anniversary. Please make sure you follow us at League of Lit Podcast on Instagram and at League of Lit Pod on TikTok. If you have any suggestions for an episode, please feel free to leave a comment on leagueoflit.tumblr.com.